Right a future Episode around. about uh, Fry, 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 Fry eats script. an a an owl. Say script. Fry, Fry bites the head 20, off you have an to say owl. Twenty twenty one. Okay. Yeah. Well, also, yeah, I do say script. Did I do it to see the owl thing? Wait, what's January 6, twenty twenty one? Oh, that was that was twenty twenty one. Never mind. <laughs> Don't remember the worst thing. Tobar. In my head, it was. I was Tobar. thinking it was twenty twenty because of the twenty twenty election. <laughs> The year is 2021, and the world is a very different place. New York City is now a giant metropolis, and planet Earth is no Wait, this is- what? Part of the Intergalactic Federation. That stinks. Do the owl- well, you said eat an owl's head? Yeah, that, I, I kinda imagine him biting an owl's head off like Ozzy, but you can- you can shorten that. The scene opens with Fry and Bender sitting at a table in the Planet Express break room. Oh Jesus God. Christ! Whoa, 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 whoa. You're the one that lengthened the maximum length. Wait, pretty Fry, short, yeah, pretty short I'm lines. at the top. Fry has a plate of food in front of him, and Bender has a sure, beer. Sure, what's good today, Fry? I don't know. I'm not really feeling it. Come on, there's <laughs> gotta be something here that's <laughs> worth eating. I don't know, Bender. I'm really not in the mood for anything. Fine. I'll just drink my beer then. Hey, what's that on your plate? Oh, that's an owl's head. I found it in the fridge. Ew. Why would you eat that? I don't know. Who could do a good bender? I'm just really hungry. None of us can do a good bender. That's go. gross, bender. Whatever, I'm gonna eat it. I can't believe you're actually gonna eat that. It's not, I go. <laughs> <laughs> it's not, I can't do a bender. You just hey, do, you not, just, I can't do a bender. Cause you're not just like doing I'm it. gonna eat the whole thing. I can't either, I don't I think it's hard. Either. It's not like I'm eating the whole no, thing. Just do that, just I'm do just that. gonna eat the head. It's even <laughs> worse. Whatever, I'm still gonna do it. I can't watch this. Suit yourself. The scene cuts to Bender eating the owl's head. He bites into it and blood and guts explode <laughs> everywhere. Fry is seen in the background, gagging and looking away in disgust. This is actually really good. <laughs> I'm gonna be sick. That sucks. Yeah, Fry never even ate it. Yeah, he just, he just he gets oh wait, did it did it say Fry ate it or just no, said it was just about looked, eating an owl's on. head? Yeah, I think I think it I think it separated I what was our it concepts. Concepts. What was our prompt though? Did it say Fry eats an owl's head or just said about eating an owl's head? <laughs> about, about eating yeah, an owl's head. Yeah, no, okay, so yeah, Fry didn't have to be the one to eat it. Okay, that's fine. Lila enters holding a bag of owls. What the hell is going on in here? Bender's eating an owl's head. <laughs> what? Yeah, it's really good. You should try it. That's disgusting. This is the Hulu reboot. Whatever, I'm gonna eat it. <laughs> I can't believe you're actually eating that. Hey, it's not like I'm eating the whole thing. I'm just gonna eat the head. That's even worse. Whatever, I'm still gonna <laughs> take you. I can't that. watch this. <laughs> He's hellbent on it. Finishing the elf's head, he licks his lips and smacks his lips in satisfaction. <laughs> that was really good. I'm never eating for anything ever again. <laughs> it's amazing. Can we say the professor enters? <laughs> the professor. Professor. Can I be the professor too? Yeah. Yes, you can be. Uh, I can't do any feature of her characters. What the hell is going on in here? Bender's eating an owl's head. <laughs> what? Yeah, it's really good. You should try. That's <laughs> disgusting. <laughs> Lila already said all this. Whatever. I'm still gonna eat it. I can't believe you're actually eating that. <laughs> it's the same shit. All it, is, it is literally the same. Okay, exact. wait. What's another show news, we can write? Everyone, episode? turn wait, the, wait, turn the temperature up a bit more. Turn the temperature up. Okay, there you go. Well, let's write the last episode of Good Better Call Saul. Everyone. No, it's gonna ruin it. It's gonna okay. spoil yeah, it's gonna, we don't it. Let's spoil write. That. Okay, let's write. Um, what's another show? Oh uh, no, I know what to do. Uh, what's the yeah. true ending to Breaking Bad? Yeah. Oh, write the. Tr Ooh. Here you go. After Walter White finally reveals his identity to his family, he what? what the, I'm Walter White. I am, <gasps> no! No! <laughs> I am Walter White. They then use the money they have earned to start a legitimate business together. The two partners. You didn't finish that sentence. You Yo, read it to yourself. Start a food truck, bitch. Oh, that's nice. That's amazing. That's yeah. a that's a happy ending. I know. You were supposed to read it out loud. I got this confused. is for a listening audience. After Walter White finally reveals his true identity to his family, he, he and Jesse, Jesse Pinkman cook, cook one, one last batch, batch of meth. meth. They then, then they use the money they have earned to start a legitimate business, business together. together. The, the two, two partners finally find redemption and happiness in their new life together. together and Vince justice Gilligan, for all. Vince Gilligan, Vince Gilligan, pay attention. Skylar's head gets turned Stone. into pure, pure rock. rock. By Walt this is not Jr.'s <laughs> ma magic wand. That's amazing. What? Come on. What? What does it not well, like it about begins that? Begins with a stop. It it believes that you're doing a stop sequence. Oh, of what? what? <laughs> oh, yeah, that's amazing. Of love. Of love. <laughs> <laughs> what the hell? That's what it added. <laughs> 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 
<laughs> well, Junior comes with a magic wand. <laughs> That's amazing. <laughs> uh, <laughs> so stupid. Uh, now what? Uh, com- okay, let's say combine or do a crossover between Marvel and Dilbert. And Dilbert. That's Dilbeat. In a world where superheroes and villains are real, one man struggles to make sense of it all. <laughs> Meet Dilbert, the mild-mannered engineer who just wants to do his job and get home to his cat. But when he's thrust into a world of capes and punches, Dilbert will have to use his smarts to survive. Oh my god. With the help of his friends, Dogbert yes! and Rapbert. <laughs> yes, everyone's here. Avengers Assemble, Dogbert and Rapbert. Can Dilbert make it in a world That's gone mad? That's fucking awesome. And begin killing him. All the just <laughs> surround him. Dilbert. What do you want from me? Dilbert asks. We need your help, Dilbert. <laughs> Says Captain America. <laughs> the world is so in I'm not alive to help save us. Me? Dilbert says. I'm just an engineer. I don't know anything about fighting supervillains. That's why we need you. Says Iron Man. You can help us figure out how to stop them. So begins Dilbert's unlikely journey as the world's greatest superhero sidekick. He might not be able to fly or shoot lasers from his eyes, but he just might be the key to saving the world from then, destruction. Sc- the real Scott Adams enters. <laughs> Scott Adams, creator of Dilbert. I would just specify. Creator of Dilbert. Joins the, joins the party. And tries to hypnotize everyone. Yeah. Hey guys, what's going on? <laughs> Scott says as he enters the room. Uh, we're just doing, we're just talking about the crossover of Marvel and Dilbert. Says Dilbert. Oh, that sounds interesting. Scott says. I might have to write that one day. <laughs> <laughs> Thanos enters. Killing Dilbert. <laughs> Lyle, we need a Thanos. Yeah, you'd be Thanos for yeah, sure, yeah. I am Thanos, the most powerful being in the universe. Thanos says. And I have come for the Infinity Stones. What are the Infinity Stones? Dilbert asks. They are, why is he explain? They are six powerful <laughs> objects that can grant their owner immense power. Thanos says. And I will stop at nothing to get them. As Thanos begins his quest for the Infinity Stones, the Avengers and Dilbert must put aside their differences, <laughs> differences? and work together to stop him. <laughs> but can they do it before Thanos gets his hand on all six stones? Find out in the crossover of Marvel and Dilbert! That's awesome, dude. I don't think you should even attempt, you know, fucking go beyond that. That's like a good tagline. <laughs> Sonic enters. No, you can. No, you can do you've that. made it silly now. Now it's ridiculous. I'm Sonic the Hedgehog, <laughs> the fastest thing alive. Sonic says, "I'm here to stop you, Thanos." Ah, oh, another hero arrives. Thanos <laughs> says, "You may be fast, <laughs> but you're no match for me." And so begins the battle between Thanos and the heroes. Will they be able to stop him before he gets all of the Infinity Stones, <laughs> or will the world be doomed to destruction? Find out in the crossover I love of Marvel. Marvel and Dilbert. Yes. Well, one minor thing happened. Someone entered, and it. <laughs> <laughs> what are you <laughs> doing here? <laughs> Find out next time. What a shitty show. <laughs> uh, uh, oh, I know, right? Uh, an episode of Hey Arnold, but everyone I think we're saying, um, is black. Oh. All right. Hey Arnold is set in an inner city neighborhood where everyone is black. Arnold is a fourth grader who lives with his grandparents. He is a smart, resourceful kid who is always looking out for his friends and family. Well, that's not even funny. Uh, it's that's crazy just, how just, little that changed. That is just... Let that, that be a lesson to yeah, you. Yeah, Chris. That's a, that's a teachable yeah, Chris, moment, I, I don't think. Know, I don't know why you thought the plot would change, Chris. Why, there we why go. would it be any different? In this episode, Arnold and his friends are all black. They go about their daily lives, going to school and hanging out together. But when they come across some racism, the band together okay, stand up that, for that, themselves that, that, and their that, community. That would be an episode of Black Arnold. And then... <laughs> and then... There's a big dance party at oh, the end of the Oh, come on. Wait a minute now. <laughs> and also... Mr. Simmons is there, and he's black too. And he's really cool. <laughs> well, that was, that was implied. That was implied in the prop. And and also Grandpa's there, and he's black too, and he's really cool. <laughs> okay, now now they won me over. Uh, now I'm starting to kind of. Uh, Arnold's black grandma walks in, and her eyes roll back in her head. Sees everyone dancing, and she's so happy and excited. That's she just, would be like that's that. That's just nice. She's like that. Yeah. Suddenly, the power goes out and everyone starts to panic. But then Arnold's grandma knows just what to do. 
she starts to sing a song about being strong and overcoming <laughs> adversity. And then everyone joins in and they all start to feel better. The power comes back on and they all finish the dance party together. That's nice. Yeah. We police all. No way. Wait, 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 wait. <laughs> they're <black too. laughs> they're really cool. That's what you fucking get, Chris. So you and get they to play the racist this people, and everyone is cheering. AKA Chris yeah. O'Neill. Chris is who gets arrested. Chris, that's Chris what is the, I do. Chris is like the a, only guy who gets arrested. That's the most wholesome. You ending. were trying to make the AI I kill the other AI. You were trying to set something on. That's like true. one of those like Capri Sun commercials <laughs> yeah, where yeah, they're like yeah. having a party and the cops show up. And they're like, uh oh, and then the cops Wait, also drink the I Capri Sun. I want some too. That was pure wholesome as fuck. Hey, is that Capri Sun? You tried to make that not happen. You're the yeah, racist. Yeah, yeah. You wanted that robot to fucking go a certain way. <laughs> no. Think of it a cool website idea. That's a good idea. That's a good prompt. Social media network for artists. Two, so a website that helps you plan your dream vacation. Three, a site that sells custom-made shoes. Four, platform for independent filmmakers to showcase their work. Jesus Five, Christ, these are all good marketplace ideas. Marketplace for handmade goods. Ooh, Jesus. Yeah. A ask us what we should do with crackmilf.com. Yeah. Oh, yeah. What should we do? With the domain. With crackmilf.com. <laughs> you really want that thing to take off? There's no one-size-fits-all answer to this question, but the best course of action will vary depending on the specific website in question and the nature of the content it contains. However, some possible actions that could be taken include contacting the website's administrator to request that the content be removed, or reporting okay, the website ouch. to an internet service <laughs> provider yeah. or law enforcement agency. Whoa! Oh, Man, I was gonna say we should do whatever it recommends, but I don't think I want to do that, Talmar. I don't want to see you go to jail. <laughs> there was once a man who had two penises. He was quite proud of his unique anatomy and loved to show it off to anyone who would look. Whoa. Unfortunately, he didn't realize that not everyone found <laughs> it as interesting as he did. In fact, most people found it quite off-putting. One day, he decided to go to the beach with his two penises <laughs> out for all to see. However, instead of the admiration he was seeking, he was met with looks of disgust and horror. People pointed and laughed at him, and he quickly <laughs> became the object of ridicule. He was so embarrassed that he ran home and never left his house again. He became a hermit, and his two penises remained <laughs> hidden from the world. <laughs> can, a great ending. That's a good ending. Hold on, can you, can you do me a favor? Yeah. Can you just type bluntly what was the moral of that story and see what it says? Don't be proud of something that others may find disgusting. <laughs> <laughs> That's so evil. That's a good message, though. But what if I find s certain things disgusting that I should read? About, read that part back if you have those thoughts again. <laughs> Write a nostalgia critic episode. Where he reviews what? Where he reviews the boy in the striped pajamas. Yeah, there you go. She yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, what, is, what is the boy in the striped pajamas? It's about a- it's about the Holocaust. Oh, it's a boy in a concentration camp? Yeah. Oh, I see. <laughs> Hello, I'm the Nostalgia Critic. I remember it so you don't have to. And today we're looking at one of the most heart-wrenching, emotionally charged films of the past few years. It's The Boy in the Striped Pajamas. <laughs> the film tells the story of Bruno, a young German boy who befriends a Jewish boy named Schmuel who is imprisoned in a concentration camp. The two boys form a deep bond, despite the fact they can never meet in person. The film is incredibly powerful, and it's easy to see why it's been so popular. It's a beautiful story of friendship and hope, and in the midst of one of the darkest periods in human history. However, <laughs> the film is not without its flaws. Oh, here we go. The biggest problem is it's incredibly manipulative. The film is like, son of a mask! Imagine if he did a fucking review where he was like, treating you with reverence, and he was like, this is not funny, this is just a good thing. <laughs> the film constantly tries to tug at your heartstrings, and it doesn't always succeed. The other problem is that the film is very one-sided. <laughs> No! 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 One-sided? It's clear that the filmmakers have a very specific point of view. They're not which, interested in which, hearing any other side of the story. <laughs> Overall, The Boy in the Striped Pajamas is a powerful film, but it's not perfect. It's manipulative and one-sided, but it's still a beautiful oh story that will stay It's so one-sided. It makes the Germans- <laughs> makes the Germans have to be like the bad guys. <laughs> <laughs> that is what he'd say. Oh my god. Oh my god, I'm fucking crying. Holy fuck. Jesus. Holy fuck, that's funny. NASA got an image back from Mars. 
of an alien gaping its anus at the camera, like Goatsy. Okay. In this scenario, NASA got an image back from Mars of an alien gaping his anus. <laughs> this caused a lot of frustration and debate among the scientific community as to what this could mean. Some believe the aliens may be trying to communicate with us through this strange act, while others believe they may be simply doing this as a way of relieving them to relieve themselves. Regardless of the reason, this really? image has caused quite a stir among the scientific community and has led to many new theories about the aliens on Mars. Uh, oh, fuck. Cool. Yeah, that's good. Uh, that's all I needed. Let's uh, describe it. Tell it to describe an alien Christmas. <laughs> yeah, oh, good. yeah, alien Christmas. I like, I like bringing back alien Christmas once every couple months. Well, it's one of a recurring, you know, uh... What is this thing here? <laughs> The image was beamed back to Earth and excited scientists- Wait, what is this? Okay, got an image back from Mars of a big giant cartoon turd. Okay. So, okay, the image was beamed back to Earth and excited scientists rushed to the lab to see the new image from the rover on Mars. Upon closer inspection, they realized the image was of a big giant cartoon turd. The scientists were baffled and tried to figure out what could have caused this, but they were never able to come to a conclusion. I love the idea of what you guys in lab coats running- Guys, we got something! It's like the wow signal, but it's a giant cartoon turd. <laughs> so stupid. It just uh, is a cartoon. T is it like like it's like, like the clip like art? The, like the poo like the poo emoji? Yeah. It's like, it's like a default PowerPoint. <laughs> no one. Yeah, Alien Christmas. Ask it uh, to describe an Alien Christmas. Describe describe what the alien... per describe the perfect Alien Christmas. Okay. Can you do this in your Tazon Day voice? The perfect Alien <laughs> Christmas would be a festive celebration with lots of food, music, and merriment. Aliens would gather from all over the universe to celebrate and the holiday together. There would be a giant feast featuring dishes from all different cultures, and a giant tree would be decorated with sparkling lights and colorful decorations. Everybody or everyone would exchange gifts and have a great time together. Wait, can you do that again? Nope, I but got can, no problem with that. Can you do that, that again? But can you sing it to the to the beat of the song? <laughs> no, that's really hard to do. <laughs> Uh, yeah, it doesn't even make sense. The perfect alien Christmas would be a festive <laughs> celebration with lots talking, of I love this. food. This is going great so far. Music and merriment. Aliens would gather from all over the universe. It doesn't make any sense. <laughs> That's kind of what he says in the song. Yeah, that, that is the, I was going to say, that is the premise of the song. The plans that to Christmas right. <laughs> yes. An alien Christmas 